Hey there, uh, finally, probability of making a 50% profit on a uh, option spread. We're going to do a short strangle. Uh, I apologize that this took me a while to get out. I've been sick, and then before that I was busy with work. And um, so instead of having me just sit here and yammer, let's uh, get on with it. So let us fire up our Jupyter Notebook where we did the probability of making 50%. Um, here it is. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's make it, I don't know, we'll make it this big for now. Um, there's one little issue with this piece of code here. Let's see if I can figure out where it is. Um, in the function call here, this should be n days, and it is n day. So let's fix that right off the bat. And I'm not quite sure how scoping works in this, uh, in, a, in a notebook, but this picks up uh, the right value anyway. So the the results are good, but the actual code uh, needs to be tweaked there. And let's just make sure this runs by going up here and going run all. Looks okay. Uh, there's our plot. Looks good. The numbers make sense. Yes, they do. Okay. Now let's go back to the beginning and move on. So let's see here. We did our import here. We defined our function in this cell. Uh, we created our uh, stock mat matri matrices of stock prices and call prices here, and then we did our statistics in the cell below. So let me just um, make some notes here just so I can keep my place. Uh, so off the recording, I added these little notes here, uh, model stock prices and you know defined functions just so I could keep track of things. And now let's get on get on with it. Uh, one potential issue that we're going to have is the implied volatility of each strike is potentially different. So what I'm going to do here, uh, where we just have one volatility defined right here, I am also going to define a sigma call. And right now, uh, just to test this code, I'm going to set it equal to what we called sigma. And I'm also going to have sigma put, and that's going to be also equal to 30%. So what we're going to do is use sigma for the total stock volatility in our Monte Carlo simulation. And for the Black-Scholes part, we'll use explicitly a different uh, volatility for the calls and puts. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a strangle first. So let's come up here and just make this strike price explicitly the strike of the call. Um, and we're going to do, oops we are also going to have a strike price for the put. So K underscore put, and that'll be, I, I don't know, let's just set it to 90 for the time being. And cool, let's kind of just uh, explicitly write out here, strike prices. And to make sure that I don't forget, what I'm going to do is come down here and change the values in this part of the code here. So this is our call option. So this is sigma underscore call, and here is k underscore call, and we also need that here, don't we? k underscore call. So does this cell run? Apparently it does. Uh, yeah, cool. Let's uh, go on and do the put now. Uh, I actually stopped the recording and just ran these uh, blocks of code that did the statistics here and, and generated this plot. Just This is just for the call, but I wanted to just make sure this was actually running because I'm a little under the weather today. And uh, if I don't find the mistakes kind of as we go along, it's going to take me doubly, doubly as long to do so. So, okay, now let's go on and do the puts. So what we've done here is we have our, our, our values for the call. We've calculated all of our call prices and put them in this matrix C. So let's do the same thing for the puts. So let's go down here and do put prices. So P is equal to, actually we're going to need a new set of D1 and D2 for the puts. So D1 comma D2 is equal to, let's copy this. And now it's instead of k, under, uh, k sub call, it's k sub put. And likewise, it is uh, sigma sub put. Okay, does that run? It runs. Uh, yep. So let's basically just copy this line here. Come down here. And we'll make this p for put prices. Instead of call, this is put. 
uh, instead of k sub call, it's k sub put run. Okay, so far so good. Uh, in fact, before moving on, let us go here and just print p zero zero. Make sure that we're actually getting a sensible number for our initial put price. Syntax error. What did I do? Oh, uh, I don't know what I did. I have brackets instead or braces instead of. Um, brackets. So P, zero, zero. Uh, what's going on? Now I need a parenthesis. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. So let's get rid of that. And actually, since down, uh, down below, we actually have some uh, plotting functions. Let's just change this to uh, where are we doing these plots? Where are we doing these plots? Here we are. Let's just change this to P uh, for put prices and run the run the plot. Okay, so that kind of also makes looks good here. So let's undo that before we forget about it. C for call. Okay. So now our strangle is just the sum of the put prices and sum of the call prices. So let's just call this total price, and that's going to be equal to the call matrix plus the put matrix. So run that. Um, I'm debating what to do here. Let's just uh, put in a uh, cell here and just make sure we know that this is a uh, the probability of a single call option. So I'm going to stop the recording actually and do that. So I put in the cell here just for bookkeeping purposes. This will be just our uh, call option from the last last uh, video on this topic. And I've also commented out this plotting thing uh, just so that we don't have to replot it every time we run the run the sheet. So we will actually do the uh, strangle thing down here. So let's go init price is equal to what did I call it? Total price zero. Zero. I make sure I called it total price. Uh, yes, I did. So that. Okay. And like above, we're in interested in the half of that value. So half price is equal to init price divided by two. Okay. I'm actually going to put in a uh, field above here, just like before, to um, to uh, keep all of my keep all my fields straight. So I'm going to come down here and make this a uh, markdown cell and make this probability of making 50% on short strangle. Okay, let's go on. So a lot of this is just going to be repurposing all of this, a um, lot, lot of this stuff up here. So I'm just going to copy this. So this will be um, the number of instances where we reached our half max price. So here, and instead of call, it's going to be total price. And we should just be able to really copy all of this here. So copy, paste. You can see this is essentially the same thing as before. It's just our prices are different now. So does that look right? Um, that kind of looks right. So let me run this. And it says the probability of making 50% is 73%, uh, percent, which is kind of what you would expect. Um, because you have the other option on the, uh, on the downside here, it's going to be a little bit less than this, so you can lose on both sides. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go through this kind of off of recording and make sure there are no uh, glaring errors uh, because I'm kind of, as I said before, a little sick today. So kind of uh, uh, coding under the influence of cold medicine is not the, the greatest idea. So I'm going to just go through and make sure I don't have any super obvious mistakes. And now I want to try it out with some actual live stock market data. So I tend to use Apple as my default. So this is uh, Apple. Now, unfortunately, this has earnings coming up, so I don't think I'm actually going to route this trade, but um, we will see. So today, uh, when I'm recording this section, is January 22nd. And I want to sell the regular February uh, February 21st expiration. And I'm going to just choose the 292.5 strike. 
and I don't know, let's do the uh, 350 call. So that strangle is trading for about $4.25, and Tastyworks gives the probability of making 50% uh, at 86%. So I've come back to the notebook here. Uh, I've already entered in the information. I'm taking a risk-free rate of 1%, the, the strikes of the calls and puts. Uh, the volatilities of each of those uh, calls and puts are different, so I'm entering those in, and I'm taking the overall volatility to be 29%. And I believe the platform said, where is it? The volatility is, uh, where is the volatility? 31%, which is a little odd given that the... Um, the uh, volatility of these two options is lower. What it's probably doing is doing some sort of averaging over, um, yeah, it is. It's picking up these higher volatilities closer to the money and then doing some sort of weighted average. Um, so that's something to be taken into consideration. How you actually calculate the volatility of the total underlying is a bit of an art rather than a science. So we go back here and I'm going to run the code. So we're seeing that uh, we predict a strangle price of about $3.99, so $4. Uh, so the actual price is a little higher than that, uh, $4.25. Uh, their probability was 86.6%. Uh, and I'm getting a probability of, let's call it 83%. So we're, we're within the ballpark. So, yeah, I will clean this uh, notebook up and then re-upload re it. Um, I'll add some comments and stuff about it. Again, there's some uh, ambiguities about what sigma or what uh, volatilities you take. Uh, I took the risk-free rate at 1%. The, uh, based on the euro dollars, it's closer to 1.75. And based on T-bill rates, it's maybe 1.5. So I don't know what to take. So I just took, um, took 1%. Uh, yeah, and of course you have the, the choice of uh, how you calculate the number of days. I took trading days, and I think there are 22 weekdays left, and I believe President's Day in the, in the United States, the market's closed or something like that, so I just took 21 days. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, cool. So yeah, short and sweet. Um, I am just going to call it quits here and, and say uh, until next time. See ya.